Happy Tuesday, Spectrum. This is Marcus. And Emily bringing you this week's news. Hey, ninth graders. The PSAT exam is being offered this December. The registration form was sent to all ninth graders by email. And paper forms are outside the administrative offices, formerly known as guidance. Forms are due on November 5th. Payment of the testing fee is due November 7th. Hey, Marcus. You know what I could go for right now? What? Pizza! The Youth Support Service Learning Group is hosting a food and money drive for Hope for Youth October 9th through October 17th. The Sting Advisory class that collects the most food and money will win a pizza party. Now you're just making me hungry. That's it for announcements, in Spectrum. Now let's pass it over to Sports with Brayden. Welcome back, Spectrum. As the fall sports season is nearing the end of the regular season, respectively, let's tell you all about the sports we have. Girls Volleyball is nearing the end of their regular season. Three sets was all it took for an amazing pink out game. Rachel Johnson's mother was honored at the game, and the team blew out their rivals, Pack Charter School. Boys and Girls Cross Country has three more meets for the season before they make a run for sections. They had a meet Thursday against Heritage, St. Croix Prep, and Maranatha Academy. Boys Soccer have a few more games this week, but had a nil-nil draw against the Vail Academy in their previous game. Girls Soccer had an away game at Southwest Christian Academy, which they lost, but later on had a win against Lincoln International. Finally, football had the blackout game against St. Agnes. They came out on top with a score of 42-7, keeping their undefeated record for the season. They are now ranked 4th in the state in 3A football with only Piers, Rochester Lourdes, and Mora ranked ahead of them. Well, Spectrum, commercial break is next. Let's spend your beloved anchor, Brayden Nashville, with sports. Athletes, good luck and take care. Thanks, Brayden. This year, one of our football players made a very important milestone. Fisher Marburg broke 5,000 rushing yards in a game against Minneapolis Edison, becoming only the 15th in the state to do so. To get to know this star athlete a little better, we're tossing it over to Preston and Parker. 32, Fisher Marburg! There are many great examples of well-rounded individuals and excellent leaders within our school, but none like senior Fisher Marburg. Fisher's a well-rounded athlete, and he, you know, I think, you know, he could uh, say that he's better in other sports, um, or at least he would say that from his perspective, but I believe he's also become a pretty good basketball player over time. Fisher's got exceptional intelligence in athletics. Um, he, he's very smart. He, he can read a play and react to it very quickly, and he's always been able to do that, even when he was an eighth grader. Fisher plays varsity football and basketball here at Spectrum, and also plays soccer on a club team in the spring. He has seen his share of success in his athletics, especially in football where he was the leading rusher in the state last season. He is also one of 15 players all time to reach the 5,000 rushing yard mark during his high school career in the state of Minnesota. And I've been playing since eighth grade, but running the ball since ninth, and I, I didn't really think about it until this year, but then I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and then when I got it, Two weeks ago, uh, it really struck my mind that this is a, a cool thing that I did. I think we all kind of knew it was going to happen. Um, we kept running the same play for him to get the mark, and I think we just said good job and then moved on. He demonstrates leadership in many ways on the field, court, and in the classroom. Yeah, well, with a um, science class, you have a lot of labs and to take leads on labs and help other everyone else also get them done, but also learn what they're supposed to learn from the lab too, not just give them the answers, so that's always nice. Um, on sports though, I'm the captain of the football team. I, I think I lead pretty well there. I think I set the tone for the team with my play out on the field. Um, for basketball, it's a little different because I'm not a captain this year, so I'll be a little different then, but I think I, set the tone there too with my defensive play. Because he's been in that position before and he knows what that entails, uh, I still have the same expectations of him. I feel like he can still be a leader. He can lead by example and he can lead vocally. Fisher's always been a guy that leads by example. Uh, he's, he's always showed up in the weight room. He's always been in practice. He's always done the things he's supposed to do. So um, when we talk about leadership, we talk about being a, a leader by example first and then being able to encourage people because you're already doing it yourself. He is also an outstanding student to have in the classroom. Fisher is one of the top of his class and scored a 33 on his ACT twice. I think he's a really strong student. He um, is very helpful for other students as well. He'll help teach other students. He catches on really quickly. Um, he's someone who completes his work. He's always been a hard worker. I think academics show how hard you worked in high school and the effort you put towards your schoolwork and stuff, and it really shows your character. For most students, this balancing act of school and sports is tough, 
but not for Fisher. Uh, it's quite easy actually, because I usually get my homework done when I get home after sports. Uh, the fall and the winter are the toughest because those are the school sports, so those are every single day of the week, so I have, I have to get home after practice and do my homework. In the spring, it's a little easier because soccer's not every single day of the week. Fisher plans to go to college next year to get a master's degree in chemical engineering and hopefully play sports on the side. This has been Preston Holmes and Parker Brown, Noise News. Thanks, guys. Two weeks ago, Spectrum held its best homecoming yet. For a quick walk down memory lane, let's tune it in to Keegan and Sam. Homecoming at Spectrum High School is a very celebrated tradition as it is at most schools. Throughout the week, students showed off their school spirit and anticipated the arrival of Friday. My favorite part of homecoming is the atmosphere that comes with the week and going to the football games with my friends. On Fridays, classes were shortened to make time for the pep fest at the end of the school day. At pep fest, we had our athletic director, Mr. Peterson, talk about our sports. We interviewed him and asked what he thinks athletics at Spectrum is all about. The goal of athletics at Spectrum has always been to help our student athletes have the best experience possible, to help them as an individual compete at the highest level that they can, to help our teams go as far as they can, and to set really high standards of not only values and sportsmanship, but also of academics, and competitively to see exactly how far we can advance as a team. This has been a great fall for athletics at Spectrum. We have nearly 200 student athletes out for sports, six different varsity teams that we sponsor, and two additional teams where we co-op with other schools. Though all of our teams are doing really well competitively and giving it their very best, at this point it would appear that football and cross country seem to have the best chance to continue advancing through the playoffs. After that, we had our coordination and found out who our homecoming king and queen were. Your 2018 homecoming king is Caleb Sorensen. Your 2018 queen is, congratulations, Sophia Zimmerman. Then, after school got out, Everyone went to the big football game where our Spectrum Sting beat St. Paul Humboldt 56-7. On Saturday, the student council teams changed the cafeteria and gym of our school into a dance club for our homecoming dances. Music and lights were set up by our tech team and their director, Clint Haley. Hey, I'm Clint. Run the sound and the lights and all of that jazz for the homecoming dance. And I usually have students up here and the object is just to make sure everybody has a good time. So throughout the weeks prior, you know, I'm organizing the song requests and getting everything in order and uh, looking at how to approach it best and then, you know, going to the night, slam a rock star. And uh, we, we're here late into the night, having a good time with everybody on the dance floor. The middle schoolers partied first, and high schoolers partied after them, going late into the night, until everyone went home. This has been Sam and Keegan, Noise News. Thanks, you two. You know, it'll only be a matter of time before the College and Career Center is finished. Yeah, I can't wait for it to be built. Me neither. That's why Samantha and Marcus are going to give us a little sneak peek at what's been done so far. This year, Spectrum is creating a new college career center. What used to be four back-to-back -back classrooms is now a big and new improvement to Spectrum staff and students. Well, as you walk into the main entrance of the College and Career Center, uh, directly to the right um, of when you walk in, you're going to find kind of a, an area for dining, snacks and whatnot, uh, an area for collaboration. There will be a couple of booths in that area for kids to sit around. For sure, there'll be like a high top counter section uh, with stools at it so that kids can sit there and study and do work and have a snack at the same time. You will see a reception desk, a kind of a reception area, a, wide, a more wide open space. That reception area is, is, will serve two purposes. 
It will uh, serve the purpose of really the reception for the College and Career Center itself, as well as the reception area for the guidance area. With the numerous features, Spectrum will also be adding a gas fireplace towards the back of the Career Center, along with soft chairs and couches around it. Students will also have a, a large tables near the middle of the area for collaborative study. There will be two uh, collaborative study rooms or collaborative work project rooms for kids to be able to work in groups as well as a resource area and that resource area will house uh, lots of information related to uh, going to college. The purpose of it, the main purpose of it is really to uh, provide resources and guidance for students related to attending college. It's going to serve as our guidance area moving forward so our counselors will be available in that area. Uh, as well as another staff member who will likely serve as a college and career coordinator. It also serves, obviously, as kind of a comfortable college-like atmosphere location within our school. Uh, and we feel like it's a great opportunity for our students. You know, they can come in and, and really earn their AA degree right here on campus. I believe they only have to leave for one or two classes at this point in time. So. Spectrum wants to help students in high school think of their future plans with college. With the college coordinator, students will be able to ask questions on how to apply or concerns for which college to attend and so forth. In the time we want kids to have the freedom to be able to enjoy the space uh, and do what they need to, to do um, during that time, you know, that they have to, to be able to spend in there. It's going to be um, kind of a feather in our cap here at Spectrum. And I think uh, once students see the, the general makeup of the College and Career Center and understand what its use is intended for and its purpose is intended for, they're going to find that it's going to be a great resource for us here at Spectrum. The expected due date is November 12, 2018. Spectrum can't wait to see what the finished center will look like. This has been Samantha and Marcus, Noise News. Thanks guys. Now on a more serious note, since September was National Suicide Prevention Month, Zach Knapp and Elizabeth McCoy put together this public service announcement. It's important to us that every student is safe and knows they're cared for. If you have any, any questions about this topic, please see your school counselor, Mrs. Lockram, Mrs. Matheson, or Ms. Citron. Many people around us see the world differently. Conditions like depression can lead to one feeling secluded, unimportant, and alone. Many think that suicide is the only way out of their miserable fate. Suicide is the tenth leading cause of death in the U.S., with 44,965 Americans dying from it each year. Remember, there are other ways out. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline for the help you deserve. They offer free, 24-7 confidential support to those who need it. Remember, help is available. Thanks, Zach and Elizabeth. Remember, if you ever need to talk, the counselors are always here for you and are more than willing to help you out. For Noise News, this is Emily and Marcus, keeping, keeping you in on the noise. noise.